So mice who can't blow off extra electrons as hydrogen peroxide as reactive oxygen species get very fat. That's really interesting because a lot of people for a lot of time thought that oxidative stress drove forward obesity or helped to drive forward obesity. I'm saying that something that should be, quote, causing oxidative stress, i.e. creating hydrogen peroxide, if you get rid of that thing, it makes mice fat. This video is called Electrons In, Electrons Out. It's the same concept as calories in, calories out, because calories is just a representation of energized electrons in your food, and they all have to go somewhere. I'm just going to quickly, we're going to quickly look at the mitochondria. I'm going to tell you the paper, and then we'll look at the effects. So the calories from our food come in through beta oxidation of fats, and pyruvate comes in from carbs. It gets turned into acetyl-CoA. Those electrons from the acetyl-CoA are transferred to a molecule called NAD+, which is an electron carrier, and that becomes NADH. And those extra electrons are carried essentially with that H. So NADH is where the electrons from your food flow to. Then NNT, which I call complex six, uh, take takes those electrons from NADH and transfers them to something called NADPH. NADPH is used in antioxidant defense. It takes hydrogen peroxide and it makes it water, makes it harmless. Uh, there's an enzyme called NOx4, which lives here uh, in the mitochondrial membrane. And that NOx4 just takes the NADPH. So these electrons that came in from your food is NADH, they became NADPH, now that NOx4 is going to take those electrons from NADPH and it's just going to convert them to NAD+, NADP+, and it's going to give off hydrogen peroxide. So, you know, follow the electrons, right? They came in from your food, they went to NADH, they went to NADPH, they went to hydrogen peroxide. Now there's even better news because it took another NADPH to get rid of the hydrogen peroxide produced here. So there's actually two steps in this NOx4 where electrons from your food are flowing out. And so when we talk about energy balance as calories in, calories out, a better way to think of it is electrons in, electrons out. And we know what happens to the electrons in healthy animals, let's say, when they overeat. Um, NADH builds up, NADPH builds up, and then NOx4 makes more hydrogen peroxide. That gets rid of some of the electrons. When the hydrogen peroxide is eliminated, that gets rid of more of the electrons. The paper is called Deficiency in the NADPH Oxidase 4 Predisposes Towards Diet-Induced Obesity. NADPH Oxidase 4 is just NOx4 uh, that I already told you about. This paper really nicely shows a lot of the principles that I talk about on my blog, Fire in a Bottle, on this video channel. The idea that ROS, reactive oxygen species, um, ROS is thermogenesis. ROS is a mechanism. It's like a blow-off valve. It's like a steam release valve. If you've ever used a pressure cooker, the pressure gets too high and you get that pssss, right? And it brings the pressure down. That's what, that's what NOx4 is doing. Sometimes... Um, you know, when in our metabolism, we build up too many of these electrons, that's called reductive stress. I talk about it all the time. But what happens is NADH levels get too high. Remember, NADH is NAD plus that's carrying extra electrons. NADPH levels get too high. Again, NADPH is an NADP plus that's carrying extra electrons. When there's too many electrons, NOx4 just simply turns them into hydrogen peroxide and we get rid of them, taking even more electrons from NADPH. So in this study, they took mice and they deleted, they knocked out NOx4. So they took away the relief valve. So these mice have no ability to just simply blow off extra electrons. And what happens is they get very, very fat indeed. Um, and you can see those mice on the screen. Uh, so these mice are on a high fat diet and it's, it's a type of laboratory high fat diet, which consistently makes mice, uh, very fat, but 
if they don't have that relief valve, they get much, much fatter. And what's the other chart there that you can see is actually, um, they call it efficiency. So the mice lacking NOx4 are very, quote, efficient. Um, what they're efficient at is taking calories and turning it into stored body fat. So these mice are really, really good at converting their calories into body fat because they don't have any release valve for the electrons, right? They have nowhere for the electrons to go to when they build up too high. Um, interestingly, these mice also have very high levels of leptin and they have very high levels of insulin and they're very insulin resistant. So leptin is a hormone that's made by your fat cells. It singles uh, satiety, it, it makes you feel full, but, but it also increases your ability to burn fat by stimulating AMP kinase or turning on AMP kinase. And so leptin is both uh, lowering your levels of hunger and it's increasing your metabolic rate. And mice who lack NOx4, mice who can't produce hydrogen peroxide in the mitochondria, uh, they become leptin resistant and they also become insulin resistant. And so, you know, these mice are, are pretty bad off. Um, they also have, and this is going to be the subject of my next video. The mice are also, they have a lot of inflammation. And you can see that through high levels of a transcription factor called TNF-alpha. And so, without that blow-off valve, these mice are getting reductive stress and they're getting inflammation. Um, check back in, we're going to talk about exactly why that buildup of NADH causes inflammation. Um, and interestingly, very interestingly, the last finding of this study is that these, the mice who lack NOx4 actually have high levels of something called UCP1, which is uncoupling protein in, in, their, uh, in their brown fat. And so uncoupling protein is something that allows you to burn off. Um, it's also something that allows you to do thermogenesis. It allows you to raise your body temperature. And so these fat mice are actually pretty good at doing thermogenesis. They have a lot of UCP1. They're actually resistant to, um, to cold. Their, their body temperature doesn't drop that much in response to cold. So they're good at doing thermogenesis, but yet they're very fat because the NOx4, the ability to get rid of extra electrons, is actually seemingly, according to this paper, more important than the ability to do extra thermogenesis in your brown fat and in your adipose tissues. So if this paper shows anything, it is the importance of being able to get rid of those extra electrons that come in from your food that are carried on NADH and NADPH. NADH, uh, two high levels of NADH drive reductive stress and all the problems associated with it, including inflammation. NADPH drives the process of de novo lipogenesis. Uh, people who are obese, people who are diabetic, do a lot of de novo lipogenesis. They have a lot of NADPH. And so you need a way to offload that. Um, I have been promoting a product called calcium pyruvate. Pyruvate has the sort of unique ability. Pyruvate is a normal breakdown product of, of glucose. And it's, it's what comes into the mitochondria here through pyruvate dehydrogenase, which, by the way, also creates hydrogen peroxide. And that pyruvate uh, comes into your cells and something called lactate dehydrogenase uses it to offload extra NADH. And so uh, dietary pyruvate or supplementary pyruvate helps you get rid of those excess electrons. It's just one of the ideas. You can save 12% off calcium pyruvate at bulksupplements.com. You can actually save 12% off anything at bulksupplements.com if you use my promo code FIRE, F-I-R-E. And I'm going to have a bunch of videos coming up, one about inflammation um, and really about how antioxidants can cause inflammation. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That's the next video. I'm going to have a whole bunch more. Come back soon.